everybody, it's Steph Mischuk with StudioWeb.com and KillerPHP.com. In this video blog, I'm going to go over the rules of programming. And um, this is based on a, a blog I just put up. So I, I'm going to distill my, I guess, 15, 16 years. So is, that, is that a little? 15 or 16 years or more of programming experience going back to the mid-90s. Uh, in this blog. So rule number one, Steph's rule number one of programming. Uh, you will not remember everything you learn. That's something that comes up actually with uh, people who are beginners, maybe somewhere between beginner and intermediate. They get a little concerned about forgetting details about a particular language, forgetting the syntax. You know, how, how exactly do you use... Uh, this library in PHP or that library in Ruby, depending you know depending on what you're doing. And I'm here to tell you that it's uh, over time, it's inevitable. You're going to forget details about how to write certain type certain code. That's why uh, God invented Google and PHP.net. And in the case of PHP, these references where you can look up this particular code that you would have to write to do something. The most important thing that you have to take away from when you're learning and when you know a programming language is to know the basic concepts and constructs, to understand what a class is, how to create a class, to understand when and why you would use classes, and, and even simpler things, you know, what arrays are, what collections are, how to iterate through arrays, how to create functions, methods, uh, and so on and so forth. It's uh, that is the important thing because once you know these concepts, then the specifics about you know how to write the looping code, for instance, for instance in Ruby, you know, is a basic example. But how to write that code specifically is not important. All that you understand is need to understand what it is and how you use it. Why would you know? Why would you use a certain type of uh, iterator, as it called, versus another? But, you know, specific implementation, specific code, not important. Now you just look it up. That's why they have IDEs, Integrated Development Environments. These are programs that will, you type, for instance, you type in the beginning of a class method from a particular language, and the IDE is smart enough to suggest to you a little drop-down menu appears, and will say, well, you can complete it with this, 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 this or, or that option. And there you go. So, you know... As you learn more, as you become more experienced, as you you will forget things, especially if you stop using a particular language for a little bit because you switched over to another for whatever reasons. For instance, myself in my career, my favorite language at the time, especially when I was really active in coding, was Java. I did a lot of Java coding, but it's been years since I've really written any Java. And uh, ask me uh, about you know, how to write X, Y, Z, and, you know, how to do threading in Java. I, I don't remember the syntax. I would just look it up, and I would just start programming it. The most important thing is to know how to use threading in Java and what are the implications of using threading in Java. Threading, by the way, is the process of spinning off processes into their own uh, thread so that, they, you know, you can have... Uh, for instance, your app it could be con connecting to the database and grabbing information from the database. At the same time, it could be doing something to the UI. One doesn't have to wait for the other. That's why you use threading. And the old rule in Java, of course, was not to use threading whatsoever because it was a real mess. Um, in HTML5, they're called uh, web workers, I believe. Yeah, and you use that. To, you can spawn threads within the browser and you could do all kinds of stuff. And that actually works pretty good, apparently, although I haven't done it too much. So, And there you go. There's an example. I know what it is. I know the browsers can do it. I know basically what it does. I don't remember the syntax. But you know what? I just look it up and there it is and away I go. Steph's number two rule of programming. To learn PHP code is to write PHP code. Now, replace PHP with any other language, HTML, CSS, Ruby, Python, Java, C Sharp, Objective-C, etc. The key is, the quickest way to learn to code and to hone your coding skills is to actually write the code. Uh, for some people, guys like me, I'm inclined to read books and, you know, 
understand the theory and so on. And then, you know, and, and theoretically, I could understand a lot of things. But I've learned through hard experience, but especially when I was first learning JavaScript back in the day. That was my first language, I believe, mid-1990s. I had a hard time actually writing JavaScript code for the first time, even though I had read these thick books. And I, you could ask me, how do you do this in JavaScript? And I would go, oh, yeah, you just do this and this and this. But when I actually sat down to write the code, I was really, really bad. And it, 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 it got me to think about my method of learning to program and later on to teach. You got to get coding experience into your students' hands, or if you're learning, into your hands as quickly as possible. It should be 10% theory, 90% practical in terms of the spread, in terms of learning to code. Maybe in the first couple of days, it's it's maybe 80% theory and 20% code, but that's only the first couple of days. Then you move into it and you start writing code. That's how you're going to learn the quickest, and that's how you're going to become a good programmer faster. My number three rule of programming, there are many ways to skin a cat. And uh, even in Ruby, they, they, they have an expression for that, something about toads or something, I don't know. But anyway... This is something that you have to recognize. That in, in any particular language, there's usually multiple ways to do many different things. And the reason for that is, you know, sometimes one method might be slightly more efficient than another method, depending on the circumstance. Um, it also could be just a question of taste. Some people prefer to do it one way, some the other way. So you just recognize that, that there's many different ways to do the same thing. Uh, don't get married to a particular uh, method. Don't get married to a particular library. You may switch in and out of them depending on what your project's needs are at the time or depending on how your tastes evolve at the time. So, for instance, in PHP, there are several libraries that you can use to connect to databases. Uh, the most popular today are MySQLi, uh, and then you have something called PHP PDO. PHP PDO is uh, uh, pure object oriented and you can use it to talk to any database whereas, uh, and the syntax is the same regardless of your underlying database. So you're talking to MySQL one day, another day, using the PHP PDO libraries, you can connect to Postgres SQL and it's the same syntax. So there's an advantage there. Whereas the MySQL I libraries are specific to MySQL and it has both an object oriented layer and it has a procedural layer. And if all what I'm just saying right now makes no sense, then you have to go to studioweb.com or Killer PHP and learn it there or anywhere else. But the point is, is that you got multiple libraries that are pretty involved and they do the same thing. But there are nuances as to why you want to use one or the other. These days in 2014, people are moving towards PHP PDO, generally speaking. They like that idea of the flexibility. Eh, I'm, ag I'm agnostic with, with regards to that, so... I'll leave that to you to decide. Rule number four of programming, keep your code simple. Uh, the simpler the code, the faster it runs, typically the easier it is to update, the easier it is to write, and the easier it is to create. Simple code is best. When you see people getting into the intermediate levels of programming, they, they get into all these cool new ways that you can write software. And some of these cool new ways are, are, are warranted and they make sense and they're, because they offer something to the project. They offer, uh, they, can, they can really take a bunch of code, make it much simpler, or they can make the code run much faster, other reasons too. But that being said, I would caution you to lean on to go towards rather simpler code, code that's really easy to understand at a glance, even if you're gonna write, even if that simpler code means 10% more actual lines of code, or 15% depending, simpler code is just easier to, to work with down the road. So think about it, Six, if you write a real complex uh, method or a series of classes, and then six months down the road, you got to come back and look at it, having not seen it in, in six months. You may have a hard time trying to figure out, you know, what your brilliant logic was at the time. But on the other hand, if you have really simple code, that's oh, yeah, that's simple, that's simple, that's simple. Then 
you know, for you to update it and, and get your head wrapped around that code base, you know, later on will be much easier. So keep that in mind. This is a judgment call again. It depends. You know, this is where experience comes in. Uh, highly experienced programmers will be able to judge when it makes sense to go one route or the other. But generally speaking, always lean to make your code very simple, uh, self-describing code. What do I mean by self-describing? You should be able to look at a, a page of code and look at the method names or function names, look at the variable names, and go, oh, yeah, I know what, this, what we're doing here. You know, the, the method names sh should be, you know, long. You know, they should describe, you know, say, send email to users, send email to admins. You know, long method names like that, function names, are good because they tell you something right away. So comments are good. Like, you know, you put comments in your code to tell you something about the code, and they're good. But if you have a code base that requires very little comments or no comments because it's so self-describing, that's fantastic code. So there you have it. There are my uh, four rules of uh, programming. For some reason, I just called the blog post the number one rule of programming. I don't know. I just wanted to keep it simple. But those, those are my four rules. If you follow these rules, you will be a much better coder. You will produce much better code and will make your life uh, as a programmer easier as you continue to evolve and learn because that's a big part of programming is to continue to learn whether it be within the same language or moving into other languages. Because if you know PHP and you start learning Ruby, your PHP will get better because you've learned Ruby and so on.